Flowrider achieved a lucrative chart run in the thousands and early 2010s, becoming the definitive party pop rapper of his time, only rivaled by Pitbull. Unlike traditional rappers who are more centered on their flows, delivering hard bars and punchlines, Flowrider was more about cultivating a vibe and catchy lyrics alongside the right pop hook singer. Flowrider first began to make his name known in the southern hip-hop sphere. His breakout hit single Low alongside T-Pain was released in 2007. It became a smash hit and a defining song of the thousands. It had a gradual rise to the number one position, eventually becoming the longest running number one of 2008. It managed to become the most downloaded song at the time of its release. T-Pain was the clear star of the show and had all the makings of a T-Pain hit. Still, Flowrider had found a formula despite being the secondary artist on his own song. Despite the groundbreaking success of Blow, his debut album Mel on Sunday was a considerable poor seller. His albums would always take a backseat to his singles. Flowrider knew how to efficiently utilize the digital singles era to his advantage and would come to master pop radio for good or bad. His second radio hit would come alongside a then unknown singer by remixing an 80s dance classic, co-penned by then newbie Bruno Mars. Before TikTok would storm the charts, this was Kesha's first introduction to the world. Right Round was a massive hit, but unfortunately for Kesha, it wasn't that beneficial. According to Wynn, she said, it was an accident I was even on the track. I didn't make any money off of it. That's why I put the dollar sign in my name as a joke. But I was happy singing in bars, wearing clothes I found in the garbage, and surrounded by people who love me. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, she said, I didn't get credit. I didn't get paid. Honestly, I walked into the studio and there was Flo Rida and Dr. Luke doing the song. And I was like, I'll just sing on it. I'm just happy you like my voice enough to put me on your song. I believe in karma. So if I'm not a douchebag about that, it'll just come back to me. So it's like, you know what? If you don't want to pay me, it's fine. I'm excited to have my voice on the radio. Kesha was also initially uncredited on the song, but was later added after her success as a solo artist. The song was a massive hit, and Flowrider's second number one single. The song broke the record for first week sales, with 636,000 downloads when it was released to digital retailers. Eventually, this record was broken by Adele's Hello. The song itself went on to sell over 10 million copies worldwide, and Kesha received zero royalties. In 2010, Flowrider would create his own label and sign a plethora of young talent. Black would become one of those people, eager to break into the business and showcase his talent. Unfortunately, the deal did absolutely nothing for his career. In 2018, Black sat down to talk about his experience at the label, saying, In the three to four years that I was signed, I never did one paid show ever. And I did a ton of shows with them. I never got paid for any show. I never got paid ever. I never saw a check. The only time I saw money was when I was like, yo, can I get something to eat from someone at the studio? He was trapped in the deal for a few years before being able to resign. Although much is not known about Flo Rida's private life, it's clear that he had a lot going on behind the scenes throughout the years but his career kept flourishing. He collaborated with people like Lady Gaga and Alexandra Burke. In 2011, he would once again lean on the sample formula that was present in Right Round, this time utilizing the legendary Etta James on the song Good Feeling, which proved to be a success for him. Before Sia would become a musical juggernaut, she also got some of her first major traction by singing the hook of Wild Ones that scurried its way into the top five of the Billboard Top 100. However, the song that is a bit more remembered from his 2012 album Wild Ones is Whistle, a not so subtle song about oral sex. It was one of his major hits where he didn't rely on a hook singer, because the whistle in the song takes up a bit of that same role. This song sounds like it was engineered for radio domination, and it topped the charts in multiple countries including the USA. In 2015, he released My House, which included the top 5 single of the same name, and the sleeper hit going down for real, titled GDFR. And ever since then, Florida has practically flown under the radar, like most pop rappers from that time. And I think some of that has to do with that kind of pop rap just going out of style. Still, Florida has made numerous announcements with promises of new music. 
I wonder if Florida has built up Maroon 5 level immunity to the point that it doesn't matter what he releases, it will be played on pop radio. I think it's a bit unlikely, but there is a chance that Flo Rida could be storming the charts and pop radio once again anytime soon. 